What would it take for you to defy the leader, the king, the president of the nation that you live in? What would have to happen that you would get a command, a direct command from your king or president and say, no. They say, okay, if you don't, I'm going to kill you. And you still say, no. Well, for William Tyndale, who lived from 1494 until 1536, he said no when the king told him to stop translating the Bible into the English language. In the early 1530s, an English merchant named Stephen Vaughan was commissioned to find William Tyndale because King Henry VIII desired him to return from hiding in the continent. In a letter dated June 19, 1531, Vaughan wrote about Tyndale these simple words, I find him always singing one note which was his way to say he only ever says the same thing over and over and over. At that time, Tyndale was in exile because it was against the law in England to translate the Bible from either the Latin or from the Greek and Hebrew into the common language of the people. It was against the law, and Tyndale said, no way. we got to get the Bible into the common language of everyone that lives on our continent. So rather than saying, okay, king, he went into hiding. And the king wanted him to come back and wanted him to come back, and Tyndale kept refusing because he says, I will not come back unless you allow someone, it doesn't even have to be me, but allow someone to translate the Bible into English so that people can read it. That's why you have an English Bible in your lap right now, or it's very near to you. Dozens of them are very near you right now, mostly because of what God did as he used many people, but especially this man, William Tyndale. When he was only 28 years old in 1522, he was serving as a tutor in the house of a guy named John Walsh. And he spent most of his time studying the Greek New Testament that Erasmus had produced just a few years earlier. The original language that the New Testament was written in is Greek, and Erasmus of Rotterdam had produced, and they started printing it and distributing it. And so as William Tyndale was just a tutor for a rich family, he's teaching the kids, he spent most of his time just studying the original languages. For centuries, the Bible was not in the common language of anyone, and it wasn't accessible in the original languages that it was written in. The Old Testament, Hebrew language. The New Testament, Greek. It wasn't accessible. And then Erasmus produces this Greek New Testament, and people all over start getting it, reading it, and that is what God used to launch the Protestant Reformation. So Tyndale is studying the Scriptures, studying, 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 and he ends up finding himself in many awkward situations as he's having dinner with his wealthy benefactor that he worked for and then traveling people that would come in and have dinner with this wealthy man. And many times, Tyndale was such a Bible man that these either men from the Church of England or men from that believed in Roman Catholicism and stuck with that doctrine, Tyndale would not be able to keep from saying, No, that's not what the Bible says. Even though it wasn't really his place. But upon challenging one person at one specific time, this this specific man who was visiting and was a Roman Catholic, he said, we were better, we would be better without God's law than the Pope's law. He said, we'd be better if we just got rid of the Bible and listened to the Pope. Now, Tyndale, loving the Bible, knowing that the Bible is God's word, Tyndale said this, I defy the Pope and all his laws. If God spare my life ere many years, I will cause a boy that drives the plow to know the scriptures better than you. What was he saying? He's saying, if God would spare my life, 
I'm going to do everything I possibly can to get God's Word translated so that people, frankly, like you and me, could read it. I don't think any of us are scholars. None of us have our PhDs or our doctorate in theological studies or Greek or Hebrew to be able to read the original languages, but Tyndale knew, as many have known since him and many knew before him, that the Word of God needs to be translated into the language of whatever people exist. It needs to go to every tribe, every tongue, every nation. And at this time, it was mostly just in a Latin translation, which most people can read. Tyndale ended up being caught later in his life. They took him to a pyre of wood. They strapped him, bound him to the wood, and as they set it on fire to light William Tyndale ablaze, they also put a rope around his neck and strangled him as he burned. Because he wanted you to be able to read the Bible in English. He wanted me to be able to read the Bible in English. And the last thing that he says before he dies is, God, open the King of England's eyes. For years before his death, he spent, he spent his time in Worms, Germany, of all places. In exile, he went to Worms, Germany, which is where Luther stood in the Diet of Worms before the emperor, defying the emperor and saying, uh-uh, unless I'm convinced by Scripture, I'm not recanting. Here I stand. That same city that Luther had gone to, that's where Tyndale spent a lot of his time, and he translated the entire New Testament from the Greek language into English, an illegal translation. You want to be dangerous and do things that are illegal? Does that excite you? Do something like that. Go to Iran and preach the gospel where they'll cut your head off if they catch you. Some of you have that desire in you. You want to be a rebel. Awesome. Rebel against evil governments that want to keep the gospel from going to people. That's what Tyndale did. He translated most of the Old Testament from the Hebrew into English as well before he died. And then one of his friends came along and translated the rest of it. But this is what is insane about Tyndale's serious work to get the Bible into the English language. In 1611, just a little bit after he dies, we have produced what we know as the King James Version of the Bible, which is really like the first super official that the government recognized English translation. Many people worked on that English translation together to make sure it wasn't just biased by one person thinking, well, I think this Greek word should be this in English. They had multiple people working on that to make sure it was as accurate as they could be. That's how you do translation. Tyndale didn't have that. He did it by himself. And what remained in the King James translation, 75% of it was the exact wording that William Tyndale did all by himself. Are you tracking with what that means? This is how seriously, diligently, hard he worked to translate it from the Greek and Hebrew into English that you get a whole school of other guys doing it together, trying to be precise, and they could just barely improve in little ways what William Tyndale had done all by himself and died for. He is the one that translated the Hebrew and the Greek into some of the most famous phrases that you and I still know hundreds and hundreds of years later. Tyndale is the one that looked at the Hebrew text that Moses wrote in Genesis 1.1 and said, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That was Tyndale. It's preserved in the King James. It's preserved pretty much in every English translation because all of these scholars, even 500 years later almost, look at it and go, he nailed it. He died so that we could have the Bible. Why would he do that? 
why did he, I mean, this wasn't even, this wasn't even the issue like Luther was dealing with. It was just, I want the Bible in the English language. Well, that really, that question brings us to Psalm chapter 119, verses 97 through 105. And that's where we're going to be for the majority of our time today. So open your Bible, Psalm chapter 119, starting with verse 97, and we will see just why Tyndale would go to such great lengths to get the Word of God to common people like you and like me. Rome believed the Bible was far too difficult for ordinary peasants like you and me to understand. So therefore they said only the Pope can truly interpret the Bible. We don't even need to mess with trying to get the Bible into the common language of any people because they can't understand it anyways. It's too obscure. It's too muddy. You have to be the Pope to really interpret it. So we'll just leave it in Latin because the Pope can read Latin. Sadly, the King of England in Tyndale's day held to the same type of notions. They believed God's word was obscure, murky, frankly unclear for the average man, woman, or child. Only the very wise and scholarly could interpret it rightly. So I ask you, do you think in any way along those same lines that, well, I can sort of understand some of the stuff, but man, it's just so unclear. I'll just listen to someone else teach or listen to someone else preach or just go to someone else that I trust to see what I should believe. Do you believe that in any way? Does that exist in your mind or in your heart? Or do you know that what God says in His Word, hear me, can be understood by any of us? It is not unclear. 